peanut barks incessantly. Do you always do that when you bark so you pick him up? Yeah. Yes. Oh. <laughs> that bark is so loud. That's a dog. Look at that little strutting. Yeah. <laughs> this is Peanut. Peanut. My first impressions of Shelby, Craig, Peanut, and Staines. <laughs> it's, it's a little loud in that house. There's a lot of barking. So um, tell me, issues. Oh, issues. Well, the barking obviously is a huge issue with Peanut. He barks at everything. OK. So another issue is when I leave the house, Peanut goes crazy. Shelby grabs her things and tries to leave, but Peanut isn't having it. Bye, Peanut. When Shelby tries to leave the house, Peanut doesn't want her to go. So he nips at her trouser leg. He hangs onto her trouser leg, and then he puts his little front paws around her leg, like a child, saying, Mommy, please don't go. When we sleep at night, we usually crate him. And um, when I put him in the crate every night, he, he goes, Rah! and barks and makes a, a lot of noise, a racket. But when Craig puts him in, he doesn't do anything. I do it a little differently, He's if you want to see. Yeah, I want to see what it's we, like. We brought when... the crate down so we can okay. show you. Oh, no. He does this, too, sometimes. <laughs> Peanut, stop! <laughs> OK. Lay in your crate, Peanut. Going to. Go in there. Go in there. <laughs> Can I see what he does if I put him in his crate? <laughs> sure. Okay, let's let let's let him out. Let's let him out. <laughs> Okay, so if I put him in his crate, he'll do it again. Oh, Shelby, there's something going on with you. I don't know what it is. The crate is very interesting. Peanut seems to be almost hyper attached to Shelby. That he wants to be with her all the time. And it's quite normal for dogs, actually, for dogs that do become hyper attached to exhibit the same kind of behavior that Peanut is exhibiting. I think Peanut suffers from small dog syndrome. Small dogs are allowed to get away with behaviours that maybe big dogs wouldn't get away with. Small dogs are cute and cuddly and fluffy. I mean, Peanut looks like a toy. This is a very pushy, demanding, very needy dog. He is really spoiled. You can't even walk out the door without Peanut grabbing onto your pant leg. Almost like a child, like a toddler, saying, Mummy, don't go. And of course, you give in to him. Because Peanut barks, you pick him up and you put him on your lap. He now knows that's the way to communicate with you. Right. You're going to give in to stop the barking. He's just so cute. I just, it's really easy for me to give in to him. Peanut's very hyper aware. He senses your energy. He knows all the triggers of when you go out. And hyper aware dogs are also hypersensitive. Why do you think Peanut barks so much? I think that he barks because he wants my attention and he wants to control our family with all of his barking. Yes, I think insecure dogs control environment more. He has found that the results of his barking are deeply gratifying to him because he gets your attention. So from now on, you change. So whenever he barks at you, you don't give him attention. In fact, you turn your back and you totally ignore. I. So you ignore. Okay. I want you to wait for three seconds of quiet. What happens with this training is you can get what is known as an extinction burst. When you're trying to extinguish a behavior, the dog tries harder, so the barking becomes bigger, louder, longer. Right. 
but you have to keep going, keep going, keep going, because you know when the dog's trying to do more that the behavior's going to extinction. Right. After a burst of barking, Peanut eventually catches on. Good boy. Mm. Yeah. Three-second rule is a good one to use because you know that you're not rewarding the barking. You can make sure it's solid that you're actually rewarding the quiet behavior. Peanut will not only have to earn Shelby's attention, he'll also have to earn his toys. Now, he's not going to get it until he offers me a behavior I like. Barking certainly isn't it. His behavior has been very demanding, it's very bossy, and he's telling me, give me the toy. I'm waiting for about three to four seconds of quiet behavior, and I can sit here for hours. I have all the time in the world. But Peanut's not going to accept the new regime without a fight. I don't think he, I don't think he knows what to do. He's going to figure it out. Peanut. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I don't need to do anything. OK. He's getting frustrated. Oh, man, he's getting angry now. It was really hard watching Peanut struggle with that. He wanted that toy so bad, and ever since he's been a little puppy, he's just kind of barked for what he wants, and I've given it to him, so I feel like he, you know, he doesn't know any other way to get the toy. Shelby was worried because, you know, she didn't like to see her dog stressed out. Well, Peanut really wasn't that stressed out. Peanut was demanding the toy from me, and he wasn't gonna stop till he got it. That just meant I had to be more resilient. And so I knew that I was gonna be sitting there for a long, long time. He barked for so long. I didn't think he was ever going to stop. Peanut finally gets the message. Good boy. Three seconds. Good boy. This isn't hurting him because he's coming back to me saying, all right, we're gonna just, we're just gonna play more, okay? Right. Oh, After a few more tries, Peanut miraculously has come full circle and remains completely quiet as they play. I think Peanut's a super smart dog and he gets it now and he's gonna continue to do really well. So I applied the barking training to other things like feeding time. Stand there and don't give it to him till he stops barking. Attention away. Okay. Three seconds of quiet. Now. Your turn? Yep. Yeah. Three seconds of quiet. That's what you have to wait for. Okay. Do it any sooner, and you're rewarding the barking behavior. You could do it later if you want. But we want to set the dog up for success. The most important thing is that you and Craig do this. 100% of the time, not 99.9% .9 of the time, 100% of the time, because even a slight slip back or, oh, God, can't, can't be bothered, is going to put him back to where he was. Now, I know you have a real problem getting Peanut into the crate. Yep, we do. Oh, <laughs> yep. Could you try put him in his crate again? OK. OK, Peanut, come here. OK, Peanut, you're going inside. Go inside. <laughs> <laughs> That's a demon dog right there. That is. <laughs> OK. I'm going to give you another way to do it. There you go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's better. Hold a treat in your hand. Let Peanut nibble at it whilst you're zipping the crate up. Perfect. <laughs> Darn it. Those treats get me every time. <laughs> go, go, go. I also did it with toys too. Played a game with him, threw the toy into the crate. He would fetch it, bring it out. Go get it. Go it's go. always important to make it light and fun. <laughs> and playing with your dog is a really good way to do that. Oh, <laughs> you're funny. <laughs> 
I think that's probably what you're gonna do. You're gonna use a combination of toys and treats. And what you're saying is, it's not every time when I'm with the crate that I'm gonna shut you in there. You're building up a more positive association with the fact that he's got to go in his crate. Now, I know you have a real difficulty leaving. When you go to the door, he's there biting your pant legs or grabbing on with his front paws. Don't go. And when does that start? When I walk back to get my work bag. And then I come in and I get my keys and then I leave for work. So it's kind of the same routine every morning. OK. Could you go and get your work bag and your keys and do what you do? OK. <laughs> Oh my gosh, come back in. Come Victoria's solution is to change the pattern of Shelby's regular routine. Let's pretend you're reading. Okay. Get up with your magazine. Go towards the door. Sit down on the ground. Read your magazine. He didn't know how to respond. He was quiet. Get up again go and Shelby could walk out the door without getting nipped at. We're not tricking him, we're just breaking the ritual. So your job now is to find different ways of breaking up that ritual of you leaving. In time, Peanut's habit of resistance will be broken and Shelby should be able to leave the house okay. normally. Hopefully it'll be now much easier for you to get out of the door when you need to go to work in the mornings. I hope so. Okay. <laughs> All right. The next day, Shelby continues the training at the door with Pina. By switching the routine, Peanut finally snaps out of his usual behavior. Seconds later, Shelby can get out of the door. It's a real success. Peanut's just not yapping away in the background, and it's uh, so much nicer. Peanut has some really severe behavioral issues that won't go away overnight, but Craig and Shelby have worked really hard and I think are a lot happier, and so are their dogs. Thanks for watching. If you love It's Me or the Dog and want more dog training tips and tricks, visit my official site, Positively.com. And if you're interested in learning more about becoming a dog trainer, check out the Victoria Stillwell Academy. Links to both sites are in the description. I'll see you online.